Hi, this is Mike Clement from Greater Sum. Today we're going to be looking at how to reduce duplication in our tests using parameterized tests and domain specific assertions. As an example of this, we're going to be using this code that is starting to solve the FizzBuzz problem. So we have already created a test which is translating the integer one into the string one, and we have our code here on line 25 that is returning the string one. So we're going to now move on to our second test. I'm going to copy the first test. I'm going to change the name to translate to. I'm going to change the input to the integer to and the output to the string to. Let me go ahead and save it and run my test. The translate to should fail. Now in order to get this to pass, I'm going to change this hard-coded value to input.toString say my code and watch the test run. I expect now that they're both going to pass and they do. Moving on to the next test and again going to copy and now we're going to translate 3 to fizz. I'm going to change the input to the integer 3 and the output to the string fizz. I'm going to go ahead and save watch the test run and I'm expecting this to fail. Now one of my rules of thumb is that if I see three instances of duplication then it's something that I should pay more attention to. If I'm duplicating something once then sometimes that's not necessarily enough motivation to create another level of extraction. But in this particular case I know that I have this third one and I know that there are additional tests that I'm going to write that are going to be in this same format. So in order to not refactor on red I'm going to ignore this test so that I have the two tests which I know are passing and are green and so I can, I can easily see that my, my test suite is green. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this assertion I'm going to extract a method using ReSharper. I'm going to make it so that it's not static, that it's public the name is translate test. See we get a nice preview here below and this doesn't really help us because the data here is still embedded within the method. So I'm going to go ahead and introduce a parameter. This parameter is called input. I'm going to take a second parameter and this parameter is going to be expected. I'm going to save my code, have the test run, and this test still passes. So here on line 17 I can see that now it reads translate test integer 1 to string 1. I can do the same thing here in translate 2 and modify it to be translate test to string 2. Save it and watch it pass. So now we have a domain specific assertion around translating integers into the expected fizzbuzz output. Using nUnit, I can go one step further. I can use nUnit's parameterized test functionality, which involves using the test case attribute. Now here in the parameters of the test case attribute, I can give it um, the data that I want to have input into this particular method. So I have the integer one, and I have a string one. I can see here that the runner has translate test one to string one and that they pass. This particular test, translate one test, is now no longer necessary. I can go ahead and add a test for two. See that it passes and then recognize that there's duplication here with this test delete that as well. Now we have this test that we've been ignoring. I'm going to head ahead and add that test back in. And once we see it failing, we can get rid of this other test. We can see again that it fails for the reason that we expect, that we expected fizz, but it was 3. I can delete this additional test. And then I can continue solving the fizzbuzz problem. Taking this opportunity to refactor my tests, 
allows me to now easily add additional test cases. The one potential downside of this is that I no longer am able to give expressive names to each test, but in this particular case, it's fairly obvious how the input maps the expected output. If your particular test framework does not have parameterized tests, you can always use domain-specific assertions to at least reduce the duplication in your tests. Thanks for taking some time with us to look at how to reduce duplication in tests using parameterized tests and domain-specific assertions. This has been Mike Clement for Greater Sum.